Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well and I hope you are loving the ocean themed, water themed videos that I'm doing recently. I am absolutely loving it. It's all the summer feels, all the summer feels. Even though my YouTube channel is recommending autumn and fall decor videos, I feel one season behind all the time on YouTube. Anyway, this video is really the throwing it all in technique, chucking it all in together. I really want to test out my own DIY silicon inlays in with other things as well as then being covered with a polyurethane top sheet. So we're doing the poly method, we're putting our inlays in, we're shoving in some shells and just putting it all in together to see what happens. The results are, mm, yeah, I hope you love. I am using my favourite go-to coaster mould for this video. This is the Round Coaster Mould by Moulds and Shapes. Now, if you'd like 5% off your order, of course, all of that detail will be down in the description box. We're going to grab our miniature seashells. We're going to grab the inlays that we made in a previous video. So these inlays are homemade. Go check that out if you have not seen it. Now, the sellotape I use to make sure that the inlays are perfectly clean and there's no leftover resin from previous projects. I also use sellotape to clean out my silicone molds just before pouring the resin also to ensure there's no debris the resin I am using in this video is again Vista Turbo Vista Turbo is actually ideal for coasters and shallow pours because you can really get in there with your heat gun if you saw the previous video you'll know that it's great for deep pours it works but there are some build up of micro bubbles because again it's a fast curing resin you don't have much time to work on it it cures super fast within four to five hours it's set and micro bubbles are a thing if you are using this in deep resin so the first thing I wanted to do is use some seashells I was really thinking like what can I put in this is very much like my videos back in January if you missed those the botanical oh my gosh the botanical series where I just wanted to throw everything in I was just looking around like what can I put in here what can I put in here but again because I've not tried this technique including the poly you know putting everything in with the polyurethane I just figured I'd, I'd go easy I'd go easy on my first attempt so here I am just using a cocktail stick to push the shells down into the resin I'm only doing this purely to make sure that they don't rise up and interfere with the polyurethane sheet that we're going to put in I didn't want a big build up of bubbles even though it's ocean and we're okay with bubbles. But this method works really, really well. The easiest thing to do is to just get your cocktail stick for the flat white, you can see the flat white shells there. The easiest thing to do is press them to the ground, press them to the floor of the mold and give them a shimmy and a shake and the resin will automatically kind of come in and over them, making sure that they have sunk. The next step is to place our inlays in and very much like previous videos, I'm just coating my silicon inlays. These are DIY silicon inlays made on this channel and go check that video out if you would like to make those. Placing them in upside down so that of course when we reveal them afterwards they are the right way round. But firstly I'm thinking I could have done with a, a bit more resin in the actual mould because I just feel like a little bit more resin would have would have been beneficial as for the turtle this turtle was way too deep for this mold but very much like the pendants i've decided to just offset it to the side and i end up kind of playing around with it like do i want the head and the front two fins or do i just want half the body straight down the middle and yeah so it was a case of just playing around with it and working out what I was happy with and I decided to just go with the head and the front two fins because it was too deep for the layer of resin that I have so there you saw off camera I just placed the other seashell and the other starfish in the resin and I was really really happy next up we have these gorgeous miniature starfish now this was sent to me in a box of goodies by one of my patrons so massive appreciation thank you so so much they are super fragile really really fragile starfish and i am sad to say that when i took the bag out of the box there were quite a few broken ones in there so 
you know, don't be like me. I obviously handled it too rough. So I just picked out the starfish that were in their most complete form. Some I flipped upside down so that we get a smooth kind of look. And then some I put in the other way around so that we actually see the detail. We see all of those lines and those patterns in there. Next up is the polyurethane. Now, polyurethane drop sheet is I deal for this. I no longer use cling film. I only used cling film once, realized how much I hated it and it's just not worth it. This was just perfect. I got this one here from the pound shop. I paid one pound and I got a lot of polyurethane painters drop cloth um, from the pound shop. You could alternatively get it from the hardware store, you can get it from Amazon, you can get it all over. And honestly, food bags are often polyurethane, so anything that you've got laying around the house, like any plastics, any food bags, you could also use. And the reason it's better than cling film is that it's thicker than cling film. Cling film is a swine to try and get out of some of the nooks and crannies that you create. So I just pressed it down, had a feel, tried to get rid of as many bubbles as possible. There's really no rhyme or reason. You just want to press it down and make an indentation, make a pattern in your resin. And here we are, four hours later, it's time to peel that polyurethane off, take out my inlays, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Now, some of the resin did seep over the top of the inlays, but again, this is not a problem because it's minimal. So just go easy, pulling out your inlays because you don't want to rip your silicon. And this is a byproduct, a side effect of using the polyurethane technique. It does push the resin out and up and over your silicon molds, depending on the mold. But in coasters, this is quite common. It pushes the resin up and out the sides. So before I continue, I do like to go around and tidy up the sides. And here you can see as I'm pulling each of the inlays out, there is some debris. There is some flaky resin that has gone over the edges. So just get all of that out. Get all of your debris out. Peel it back and just make sure that you've got a really nice clean surface for when you add your powder. Now I am using the chameleon blue because again, if you saw my previous videos, I just want to go with my heart. However, I am so tempted to use ordinary mica powder in a design like this. Let me know if you've done it. I definitely want to try that next, see how I feel. But I am, for the purposes of this video, going in again with the Let's Resin Chameleon Blue because it has my heart, okay? It has my heart. If you are trying this, of course, you can go any colour you want. You can go any colour you want, but because it makes my heart happy... I'm sticking, I'm sticking to this. So again, if you've never seen this technique, we are just dusting the entire surface and all of that pattern, the embossing, all of that detail, every little nook and cranny that that polyurethane drop sheet has created in the surface of our resin, we are dusting it with our chameleon powder. There are a couple of things I might do differently if I did this technique again, like the shove it all in technique. And that is that I think I might try and do the starfish and the shell in a different shade. So not blue. However, I'm still in love with the results. I just wonder what it would look like. I wonder what it would look like next time instead of doing blue all over to actually colour the shells and the starfish and the turtle maybe in, I don't know, cream, white or brown, I don't know. <laughs> I'm filling this end up with the Vista Turbo and I am using the Vista Black Pigment. This is a beautiful liquid pigment and it goes in like silk and it mixes in so, so beautifully. All of the details for everything in this video, by the way, will be in the description box below. So we have got your 5% off at Moulds and Shapes, we've got 10% off at Let's Resin, and we've got uh, quadruple miles if you use my code with Vista Resin. So do check out the description box if you're still here. Hopefully you've caught that, it's all down there. So all I'm doing here is filling them up. Now the downside to having a polyurethane or a cling film technique project is that the edges often remain a little bit jagged. They're a little bit sharp. And despite your best efforts to get rid of excess resin that's gone up and over the sides, there often is still some there. The downside, you can already see the resin is kind of making its way up and out and I've left with jagged edges. But look at this, 
guys this is actually the next day i left it overnight the drama how dramatic is this this is theatrical i am sorry if you do not agree we are we cannot be friends <laughs> this is so theatrical in my eyes this screams stage this screams drama this screams bold and beautiful and I'm already noticing areas through which I did not focus on the polyurethane and mm, hindsight is a wonderful thing you know again first time trying this polyurethane technique with silicon inlays so if we can all learn together that's great you can take away from this video what you feel you want to do moving forward but the drama look at this I am head over head heels with this effect the actual contrast between the starfish and that deep blue dramatic backdrop i am loving loving absolutely obsessed now this is where i'm talking about the starfish so the starfish do you think it could be a different color or do you think adding it the same as the back just adds to that beautiful drama let me know what you think in the comment section down below so far i am head over heels in love with this kind of throw it all in and hope for the best technique now here is one i am not keen on there is something growing on that starfish now of course because this is a silicon inlay and then you're putting the polyurethane sheet on top really pay attention to the edges and the outside area of your silicon inlay this is the very first time i'm trying this and i'm sharing with you guys what you can do to improve when you guys go on and do it the one on the right i obviously worked it better around the inlay and the other starfish not so much it looks poorly <laughs> This one here, again, the turtle. I, I do really like the fact that it's just the head and the body. However, there are some, uh, uh, what's the word? Air bubbles. There are some air bubbles around the top of the head, which makes it look like it has these big bulbous eyes. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't get more perfect placement for two air bubbles, but it does look like I don't know, it looks like a cartoon character if you ask me. Again, I didn't pay much attention to the, the polyurethane detail around the body of this turtle. So I really could have got a much better result there. But overall, drama is the word. It is so, so dramatic. I, I think you can't help but look at these and think, wow, what's going on here? Like your eyes have to adjust to everything that's going on. It's quite visually stimulating. But let me know your thoughts. This is the blue chameleon. It has a color shift of a very light purple. Absolutely beautiful. It's quite hard to show you the color shift in this light. It's very sunny here right now in the UK and the reflection on this resin is crazy. So yeah, look at this. It's just beautiful. I think the only word I could think of when I demolded was dramatic. I do feel like they are dramatic in their own way. Very, very theatrical. They remind me of theater curtains and just oh my gosh yumminess i definitely love the one thing i love the most about doing this and trying this for the first time is the contrast between the stars and the shells against that background so do let me know would you knowing what you know and seeing what you've seen here would you then go and do this project but color in your inlays a different color what would you do let me know in the comments because I'm very tempted to say I would dust them with the same colour mica powder that I dusted the shells. If you didn't see that video, that was also done recently. I will link it here, but I'm obsessed, guys. Absolutely loving these. Cannot wait to try more. I'm already thinking of trying something else with the poly. The next few videos will be using polyurethane and other techniques. So, yeah. I hope you've really, really loved this. I appreciate you all so much. If you're still here, congratulations. We're nearly 14 minutes in. And yeah, I've done this voiceover all in one breath, which is very rare for me.
<laughs> I appreciate you all very, very much. Do not forget to hit that like button and that subscribe because it is free and I would love to have you join us here. We do have a lot of fun. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye.